All right, we've got about two minutes to go, so I'll take a quick break. We'll actually put a little, um, just have a little music on so you guys know uh, that your sound is working, and then we'll be back in two minutes. guys being here today we'll go ahead and uh, get started with the event it's now 3 30 central time uh, 4 30 eastern so uh, appreciate it yeah there you go Doug uh, so that's him with hair so again yeah just uh, you know sometimes it's hard when you're getting started a lot of times people log in the room and say hey I can't hear anything so we'll just you know that's why we like to do the uh, do the music and uh, have a little background stuff going on. But real quick, what, I, what I'd like to do, just tell you a little bit about the Trading Pub. Basically, the mission of the Trading Pub is to provide a place for our patrons where they can hang out with some of the top traders in the industry. Uh, the pub is the place to receive quality education, all while interacting with traders and investors who are just like you. So obviously, throughout the Trading Pub, what we want to do, we want you guys to learn about the markets. Uh, we have events with all types of traders uh, from all over the globe. We want you to enjoy your time here. You know, everything's better amongst friends, so let's all have a good time. And then also what we try to do with Trading Pub, any revenues generated through tradingpub.com, 10% of that's given to charity. Uh, we do a lot of with inner city uh, development and revitalization and then workforce development. If you want to stay up to date with us, uh, we record all of our events. And, you know, it, it's kind of interesting. It's, it seems like the more and more webinars there are, more and more people that are really accessing the recordings. And so... Uh, what we try to do with each each event that we have, we record it, we put it on our website uh, so that you can then review it uh, on your own time. And so, and basically, it's kind of basically like education on demand. And so, uh, we're going to record this session, and uh, we'll email it out to everybody that registered for the event. We'll also, um, you know, send it out over Twitter and Facebook as well. We're Approaching the 50,000 mark on Facebook, if any of you guys are on Facebook, if you haven't liked us yet, go to facebook.com slash tradingpub. So again, check us out there. But uh, if you've been to a trading pub event before, you know our events are very laid back. It's all about education. You know, what we don't want you to do is uh, come to a webinar and feel like you sat through a sales pitch. We want you to really get some good education out of it, and so we're going to do a good job of that today, or at least do our best. Uh, but again, at the same time, sometimes what we cover might not be for you. You know, we might talk about a strategy, and you might say, "I don't like that strategy." Well, you know, all we ask if if what we're covering doesn't really strike a chord with you, we just ask, uh, you know, that you not be that guy on the left. Uh, but basically, if you're going to be here, be cool and try to uh, try to enjoy yourself and learn as much as you can. Uh, so again. We appreciate you doing that. Give you a quick bio. I actually uh, learned about the market. It's placed my first futures trade at, at the age of 16. 
I've traded stocks, options, futures, Forex, and Nadex, and you know, really have had the opportunity to learn from some excellent traders. And that's one of the reasons I started Trading Pub is uh, just as I, you know, talk to different traders and uh, learn from different traders. You know, I thought it'd be really cool to have a place where, uh, basically, if you're, you know, a technician, if you, you know, look more at fundamentals, if you're an intraday trader, a swing trader, if you trade forex, if you trade nadex, if you trade stocks, you trade options. But really, to have a place where all types of traders can come, have free education for you guys. And uh, you know, so that was really kind of the thought process behind Trading Pub, and have really uh, you know had explosive growth over the past year and a half. And I'm excited to see what 2013 would be is is going to be. Um, and again, I'll just kind of say this as a uh, quick quick disclaimer. Basically, as a lifelong Cubs fan, I've been conditioned for patience and accepting losses. So uh, again, you know, that's kind of kind of one of the things. If you're going to be a trader. You've got to learn, got to learn to lose, and then bounce back. Uh, real quick, before we get started, I have a quick question: uh, Which one of these represents how you feel about your trading? So, when you get your statement at night, which would you would you say you fall under under number one or number two? Okay. All right. So good. So you have one and a half. I think. <laughs> I think. Yeah. One. One. One before the market opens. And that's the thing. And and I think that the markets have been really difficult lately. You know, especially for uh, longer term trading. You know, it's it's kind of like you get a position on, and uh, you know the market starts to go your way. You go out to lunch and you come back, and all of a sudden, you know, it's rallied 15 points or it's rallied 20 points or vice versa. So again, I think it's really. Um, you know, I think for a lot of traders has been a difficult thing. You know, trading is not an easy thing. And so one of the topics that we're going to talk about today, one of the main reasons I've seen a lot of traders lose money is because they can't manage risk. And so, um, again, it's extremely important to understand that, uh, that basically you've got to manage your risk. And so what we're going to talk about is a type of trading style today where every trade is a defined risk trade. So again, we're going to talk about defined risk trading. You know, another thing I think that, uh, you know, when everybody started trading, if you said, you know, do you want to spend 24 hours a day in front of the screen? And I think everybody in the room, uh, there, you know, there might be one or two addicts out there that say no, but I think everybody in the room would say I do not, or that would say yes. I think everybody in the room would say I don't want to have to spend my life tied to the screen and watching every every position, watching every tick. And uh, you know, keep an eye on that. So we're going to talk about some different strategies for that. And, and having defined risk is really a big thing, especially in this market that's so news generated. You know, where where you're going to trade, and all of a sudden somebody out of the ECB speaks, or somebody uh, you know from the FOMC speaks, and, and the market reverses just like that. So again, we'll talk about that. But what I thought I'd do is just share a few thoughts on the market in general. Uh, talk about that. I'm going to talk about who is Nadex. Uh, I'd like to thank Chip Frame uh, that you guys see in the room today. Chip is uh, with Nadex. He's going to help me out with some questions in the room in the in the chat area. Uh, again, Chip has uh, been around the markets for a long time, has a lot of experience. If you guys have traded with Nadex uh, before, then you've probably actually had the opportunity to speak with Chip and does a great job and uh, very focused on customer service. Uh, we'll talk about what Nadex costs, you know, what the fees are. We'll talk about binary options spreads. I'm going to cover three strategies and then show a couple trade examples from today just to put it in perspective. Um, I think that it's always helpful. You know, it's, it's good to talk about things in concept, but it's also helpful to see it actually applied. And then uh, we'll take some time for questions. So again, uh, a, a couple thoughts on the markets. Again, these are my thoughts. Uh, the disclaimer I'll put out there is that uh, I can be dead wrong. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm not... Uh, not the smartest person in the world, and uh, not the best trader in the world. And I'll, I'll go ahead and say that. But I think that there's, uh, and, and I've thought this pretty much from the beginning of the year. I've been right on the Australian dollar. I've been wrong on the S&P. But I feel like there's some good shorting opportunities coming, both in the S&P and the Australian dollar. So again, like I said, uh, you know, from the beginning of the year, obviously, you know, I felt that way after 
uh, kind of my plan was at the beginning of the year was when the S&P took out the 1476 area to start looking for short trades and then the Australian dollar when it was around the 104, 105 area to start taking short trades and so obviously uh, the S&P short trades I've taken have lost money. The uh, Australian dollar short trades I've taken have made money. I think that there's an opportunity coming up. Um, I've, and I've actually never traded this contract, this particular cross. I've traded the Australian dollar, I've traded the Japanese yen, uh, both against the U.S., but I think that there's going to be an opportunity uh, basically being short the Australian dollar along the Japanese yen at some point. Uh, as far as gold goes, I have no idea on gold. Uh, it was one of the reasons I asked Doug earlier what he felt on gold. But again, I really have don't have a good feel on gold um, except for, don't have a good feel on gold. Um, except for intraday type trading in on oil. Uh, really going to stay away from oil except for intraday. You know, you've got a lot of stuff, a lot of developments in the Middle East. I think that uh, if you're in a swing or longer term position in oil, uh, I would probably only play it with debit type strategies that have a defined risk. So again, uh, you know, I think that, you know, if you're long oil or short oil and, and you know, holding it overnight, that you know, you're just one announcement away from uh, something happening. I think bonds will actually probably start to rally uh, at some point in the next couple months. And then also I think that grains are going to be bullish for a few months. So I'll be looking at trading trading grains along those sides. Uh, Doug, yeah, the, those crosses, not just currencies. Um, basically, you know, and, and, and so, so basically, Doug, if I'm bearish on the Australian dollar uh, and I'm bullish on the Japanese yen, uh, then instead of going short the Australian dollar and then going long the Japanese yen, I could just trade the Australian Japanese yen. So I could just do that. Um, Jim, this is going to be more for shorter term trading opportunities. All right, so again, those are just some of my thoughts on the overall market. Now I'm going to get into uh, talking about defined risk trading, and then we'll go over a couple of strategies and trade examples from today. So uh, real quick, uh, as I introduce Chip, Chip is actually from Nadex. He's going to be helping me with some of the questions in the area, uh, in the chat area. Type in a yes or no. How many of you actually trade on Nadex? Type in a yes or no, just to kind of see what the experience is in the room. Always good to, always good to see. Okay. All right, good deal. So, so we've got a couple of people that do, but for the, the vast majority of you guys are, are not Nadex traders yet. Okay, good. So, so that gives me a good idea of, of kind of how I need to go over things. Uh, Nadex is the North American Derivatives Exchange. It's a CFTC registered electronic futures exchange. Uh, they're a DCM and a DCO. Uh, basically, the contracts on Nadex, and here's what I like about Nadex, is the fact that the contracts will be designed for the retail trader. Uh, so, so again, Nadex is really built for the retail trader. So when you think about some of the other exchanges, you know, they cater to a lot of the high frequency trading. They cater uh, you know, to the big institutions. Uh, and then the retail guys, it's kind of like we're just... Uh, you know, a very small part of their business. But yes, yeah, this event is recorded, so you'll be able to watch the recording at any time. Uh, so again, the things that I like about Nadex is the fact that it is built for individual traders. So you hear about, when you hear the term retail trader, uh, there's two types. There's retail, which is traders like you and me that trade our own individual account. Then there's institutional traders, which trade, uh, which basically are trading large funds and, and large amounts of money. Uh, there's a low cost of entry, limited risk, and every contract's fully collateralized. And then only currently, it's the only U.S. exchange that accepts direct retail members. So again, that's a big, uh, big factor. There's no membership fee to become a member of Nadex. The initial account deposits $100, and then the exchange fee is 90 cents per lot, in and out. So that's per side. And then the cool thing about it is that really you can get started trading Nadex. Uh, you can get started trading Nadex you know, with a small amount of money in your account while you practice. Okay? You never want to practice with a large amount of money. You want to practice with a small amount of money, but uh, you can get started with a small amount of money, and then as you, you know, start to learn it, start to trade better, you can always ramp it up. At the point that you decide to wrap it up, to ramp it up, all right, uh, at the point that you decide to ramp it up, the cool thing is that your exchange fees are capped at $9 per order. So basically, if you think about it, if you trade a one lot on Nadex, uh, in and out, you'd pay 90 cents a side, so that's a $1.80 total exchange fee. There's no commission, it's just a $1.80 uh, on, on one contract. If you trade a 10 lot, 
then it's nine bucks. If you trade an 11 lot, it's still nine bucks. If you trade a 20 lot or a 30 lot or a 40 lot, you're still only paying nine dollars a trade uh, uh, per side. So again, yeah, that's a very, very powerful feature as you start uh, start to become a better trader on Nadex. There's two types of contracts that Nadex has. Uh, there's a binary option contract and then a spread contract. And when I talk about three different strategies, we're actually going to cover uh, a strategy with binary options and then a strategy with spreads. So again, a binary option is a simple short-term contract, basically intraday, daily, and weekly. Uh, it has limited risk, fully collateralized contract, yes or no proposition. So basically it's kind of, it's, it's either going to pay out or not at the very end at expiration. However, you can trade it long or short throughout the day. So, you know, just like any other contract, you can buy a binary option and then sell it, and then you could sell it and then buy it again. You could trade in and out of it all day. The reason it's called binary, the yes, um, the yes or no part, is that at expiration, it's either going to pay out at zero or a hundred. So, binary option payouts of zero or a hundred. Okay. All right. So, binary option payout at zero or a hundred. And again, it's priced for the retail trader. Each contract is a dollar per tick. So basically, if you think about it on a binary option, let's say you buy a binary option at 30. Okay, if you buy it, the lowest it can go is zero. So the most you could lose on that trade is 30 bucks. The highest it could go is 100. The most you could make on that trade is $70. So again, you can see that you can tra make these trades without having to take a tremendous amount of risk. Now, you might say, well, you know, I want to make more than $70. Well, then you would trade more than one contract. Uh, Tim asked a question, does day trader status apply? And that's one of the cool things about it is it does not apply. So again, you can day trade. There's not a $25,000 account minimum. And when you think about fully collateralized, what that means is when you place the trade, you've got to put, you put up the money for the risk side of the trade. So if I were to buy a binary option contract basically at $30, then $30 would be put up from my account to go against that trade. Does that make sense to everybody? And like Chip just type in, fully collateralized is the buyer cost 20, seller cost 80 at a $20 binary price. So again, that's the cool thing about binary options. All right, here's a couple of rules that I have as far as binary options go, and, and we'll show you some examples today. Uh, and I think this is an important trading rule for everybody that you should probably write down and maybe write on your computer, uh, is basically I'm not the smartest person in the world. And so by understanding that, that means that I can actually be wrong. Okay, so I can actually be wrong on a trade, and, and so you have to understand that. Uh, it's kind of where that being a Cubs fan comes in handy. You know that you're not going to win every time. All right. Number two is I try to determine overall market direction. So I want to see what the overall market is doing and which way I feel like the market's moving. If I'm bullish on the market, I'll look to buy a binary option around 60 to 80. Okay, and here, here's, a, here's a good way to think about it. Let's just take an example. Right now, uh, if you look at the S&P, uh, you know, the U.S. 500, which is the contract on Nadex, is currently trading around 1510, okay? So it's currently trading around 1510. A, if, if there's a binary contract that has the U.S. 500 above 1510, okay? So let's think. So basically what that means is if you buy that contract, you are thinking that the S&P will be above 1510, and it's going to be settled based off the E-mini S&P futures price. So let's say that that's for tomorrow's close. Well, if we buy that contract, we, we feel that the S&P will be above 1510 at the close tomorrow. If we feel like the S&P is going to be below 1510 at the close tomorrow, we'll look to sell that contract. Now here's a, here's a rule to remember with binary options. If the underlying is trading at the strike price, the binary will be priced at 50, okay? Because it's a probability. If we're trading at 1510, then basically it's effectively a 50-50 chance that we're going to be above or below it. So the binary option will be trading around 50. So, you know, the bid ask might the bid might be 48, the ask might be 53. You know, it'll be in there, but you know that it's trading around 50. So what I try to do if I'm bullish, I look for a binary around 60 to 80 in price to buy, okay? And what I do there that means that I'm giving myself a little bit of cushion, meaning I don't have to be perfectly right. Because let's think about if I take this binary at 50, that's at 1510, if the market goes, you know, stays flat but goes 
closes at 1509.75, so basically only down a tick. If I hold till expiration, I have a full loss. If I can maybe go up to the 1515 strike and buy that for, say, 62, all right, so I'll buy that for 62, then basically, you know, I give up a little bit. I take a little more risk. Um, I take a little bit more risk. And, yeah, we'll show, we'll show this on an example. But I also give myself a little bit of an edge, if that makes sense. If I'm very bullish on something, like if I feel like the market's really going to make a strong move, then I'll actually go a little bit below the strike price and give myself a little bit more room on the reward side. So I'll try to buy at 30 to 40. If I'm bearish, obviously, it's vice versa. I'd look to sell at 60 to 70. And then kind of step five, one of the rules I use for risk management, what you, what you don't want to do uh, with any type of trading is you, you never want to see something go at full loss. So that's the worst case scenario, see a full loss. Even though Nadex, all the contracts have a defined risk, and the cool thing with that is if we have a flash crash, if uh, you, know, you lose internet connection and by the time you get it back up, the market's crash or the market's rallied against you, you know, you know getting into the trade what your max loss is going to be. And so that's really a powerful thing. You don't have to worry about, oh, well, my stop order didn't go in or it gapped through my stop or uh, you know, I'm going to cancel my stop and move it. So again, that's the, uh, that's the important thing to look at. But basically, use the 50 level uh, on the binary option as an indication of the trade and adjust your position from there. All right, so here's an example of a binary option movement uh, that you can see, see here today. And, look, and just look at this. This is just kind of an example of how a binary option will move. So it'll trade up, it'll trade down, and you see the price of 0 to 100. And so you can trade this contract all throughout the day. You know, maybe you buy it here and you sell it here, or maybe you buy it here and it comes down, you know, comes down again. Don't feel like you have to stay in that trade until expiration because you can trade in and out multiple times. You know, I know some people that look to buy things around, uh, you know, 23 and sell it at 40, uh, you know, and just pick up that 17, 17 point uh, move in Nadex. So that, again, they'll sit there and buy it and sell it and buy it and sell it. You know, other people like to just put one trade on and sit on it all day. So again, Nadex has these charts inside their platform where you can see the actual chart of that contract. So again, that's helpful. Now, there's a couple of different examples. The binary option strategy, there's a low probability, high reward uh, strategy. And I look at uh, that strategy is basically when you buy a binary option below 50 or sell a binary option above 50, okay? So basically, what you're doing there is your probability of success is a little bit lower, but you have a very high reward. So basically, you know, you're buying it at 30 bucks. The most you can lose is 30 dollars. The most you can make is 70 dollars. Or you're selling it at 70 dollars. The most you can make is 70 dollars. The most you could lose is 30 dollars. So when you do a trade like that, you have to have the market not only move in your direction, but it has to move in your direction a certain amount. So it's kind of like if you get short and the market drops a little bit but doesn't drop enough to your strike price, you can still lose. So again, yeah, like Chip pointed out, the Nadex charts, the price history of the binary, it's not the underlying. So again, that's a quick example. Now here's an example of a high probability, low reward strategy. All right, when you see a binary on $80 to $90, and you look at this trade, this is just a, an, a screenshot example uh, from a while back that I put in there. Uh, basically, here's a look at the market at 1790, call it 1792. All right, and then here's a look at the binary option saying that it's going to be above 1784. So basically, in this trade, you buy it at 89, all right, so you buy it at 89. As long as it's above 1784, it pays out at 100. So you buy profits $11, your max loss is $89. And now you might look at that and you might say, well, why would you do that? The risk reward is not there. Well, here's the thing that you have to think about. Basically, you're making $11. You're putting up $89 in risk, so that's a 12% return on risk. So again, a 12% return on risk. It's just like a credit spread in the option market if we have any option traders in there. Where basically what you're playing or you're playing the odds and you're looking at it and saying, okay, 
I think that this will stay, right, it's about an edge. And so basically, here's the thing to think about with this trade, is at 17, 17.92 is where, where the market was at this time. As long as it tra stayed above 17.84, you make money. So let's say that gold drops five points, it goes from 17.92 to 17.87, you still make money. As long as it doesn't drop below that amount, you will make money on the trade. If gold rallies, you make money. If gold stays the same, you make money. As long as it doesn't sell off enough to get below your strike price, you make money. So that's why the probability is so much higher is you have three ways of making money, one way of losing money. The way you lose money is if gold drops a significant amount and gets below your strike price. Now, if you have more ways to make money than lose money, and the odds are that you'll make money, basically, you have to look at it and say, okay, that's going to be a low reward type trade because to have somebody take the other side of that trade, there has to be a big payout. And I think a mistake a lot of people make when they first look at binary options is they say, hey, I want to buy an option at five bucks and make 95 bucks and, you know, make a 200 or a 300 percent return, you know, immediately. And, and I kind of look at that as, I call that kind of like a lotto ticket type of an option. You know, if you're buying something all the way down at five bucks or two bucks, you know, the odds of it paying off are very low, just like a lotto ticket. Now, if you're looking to buy things more at 25 or 30, then that's a little more reasonable. You don't have to have such a big move to make money. And so that's why typically if I'm very bullish on something, I might buy it in the 25 to 30 area. Uh, if I'm very bearish, I might sell it in the 75 area. But I rarely will I go, you know, and say I'm 25 or buy something at five bucks just because, you know, odds of that paying off are very, very low. So again, that's the binary option. Now, the bull spread, a bull, think of a bull spread like this of just simply trading the underlying contract. However, you have a floor and a ceiling. Okay, you can trade these daily and intraday. So basically, think about the S&P like we talked about. The S&P is at 15.10. And what if I said that, okay, you can trade the S&P, but I'm going to put a floor and ceiling on it of 1,500 and 1,520. And anywhere in there, you can trade it. So that means if you're short at 1510, the worst case scenario is the ceiling at 1520. Or if you're long at 1510, the worst case scenario is a floor at 1500. That's basically what a bull spread is. Think of it kind of like a box that you're trading within that box. Now, we'll show you some advantages to that and some ways to take advantage of it. But again, each trade's limited risk, each trade's fully collateralized. And I know, you know, I see Doug in here is a big gold trader, and you've got to have a pretty large account to trade gold. The gold margins, and, and two, this will happen as, as different markets heat up and get really volatile, the exchange might come out and say, hey, we're raising margin. And a good example of this was, uh, was in the silver markets. When silver ran up from about 25 to 50 a couple years ago, the exchange just kept raising margin, raising margin, raising margin, so you had to put more money to hold the position. Right, you have to have $10,000 to hold it overnight. Well, with a bull spread, when you trade gold on Nadex, then actually the only money you have to have to put up for the trade is the risk on the trade. So if you find a trade that has $200 worth of risk, you can basically trade a gold contract with $200. So again, the margin is such an advantage to be able to trade because they know you have that defined risk. So again, it's very powerful. Um, yeah, and, and, and Lawrence just said, made some live money on GC today on Nadex, like to practice on the demo too, very helpful. Great, that's, yeah, that's exactly, and it's priced for the retail trader, great to start out with because it's only a dollar a tick. So while you start practicing, you're trading in a live market, and here's the thing with live markets versus a demo account. I kind of have a rule about this. It, it's it's kind of my rule of SIM, you know, being a simulated account. If you make money in a demo account, it does not mean you'll make money in a live account. So I've met some of the world's greatest simulated traders, and they can't make money in a live account. They could do great in SIM. As soon as they go live, it's a completely different story. Now, the other part of that rule of SIM is if you can't make money in a demo account, then you're not going to make money in a live account. So again, the demo account is very good. It's very helpful. You learn the platform. Form, you get to practice things, track the trades, but you really don't. So if if you can kind of lower it down to a point where maybe you're trading and making trades for twenty dollars, 
that's okay. It's still a live trade. You do well, then you do two contracts, three contracts, five contracts, ten contracts. And the cool thing with Nadex, you get over ten contracts and you're no longer paying an exchange fee. So again, uh, very helpful. So with spread trading, with more volatile, do it. With more volatile markets, I try to buy near the floor or sell near the ceiling to minimize risk. So example, think about crude oil on Wednesdays. Every Wednesday at 9.30, we have the EIA report. Crude oil goes all over the place. It'll drop a buck, rally a buck. Drop a dollar fifty, rally a buck fifty. So basically, what I'll try to do is, is look for a crude spread that, let's say that there's a crude spread at 92 by 93. I'll look to buy crude when it gets down to 92 if I'm if I'm bullish. And so basically what I'm doing there is I'm having very limited risk and very high reward on the spread. It's like buying, it would be kind of like buying crude oil futures and saying I can't lose if it goes below 92. And a lot of people will say, okay, well, why not just use a stop? The difference in the spread and the stop, let's say I buy crude at 92.10 in the futures market, all right? If, if crude's at 92.10 in the futures market and I buy it and I put a stop, below 92. If it drops below 92, I'm out of the trade. And then all of a sudden it comes back up, I'm still out of the trade, I lost money. With a spread, if I buy it at 92.10, the floor's at 92. If it drops below 92, the most I lose is 92. If it comes back, I'm still in that trade. So, you know, how many people in here have been stopped out of a trade that ended up being a good trade? Where you were right on the trade, just a little off on timing, and you ended up taking a loss because it stopped you out and then it turned around. You know, probably every single person in here that's traded before can say, yes, that's happened to me. And so it's a really big advantage of a spread that basically you're in that trade until the spread expires. And so it gives you that opportunity to use the time and understand that. So again, yeah, like Chip says, it's good for overnight exposure because you know your max loss. And you also know if it goes against you and comes back, you're still in the trade as opposed to having a stop. So again, we talked a little bit about gold position sizing and margin. Margin. What I like to do is talk about three trading strategies real quick, uh, and then you know I'll cover some examples from today. But the first thing I'm going to cover is credit strategies on daily binary contracts. Then I'm going to talk about str spread strategies of buying support, and then also spread strategies of getting a small edge in the market. All right. So here's an example. This is a credit opportunity. Okay, and this was looking at uh, crude oil today. And you see here, and if you use Thinkorswim, uh, if you check this out, uh, if you use Thinkorswim, look at the studies. And there's a study on there that John Person did. It's called Person's Pivots. And it's a free study on Thinkorswim. But uh, basically, you look at Person's Pivots. And the cool thing that it does is it puts these dots out there, kind of major areas. You've got your pivot area and then support and resistance. And these are very helpful with Nadex. Uh, because you can look at major areas of support and resistance and saying, okay, if I feel, you know, you look at this market and see how often it stays in that range and basically can play those odds. So basically what I was looking at today, I thought that crude oil had, uh, had support at 92 and resistance at 93.20. So basically I'm looking to play it in that range of 92 to 93.20. Now, what I looked at there is basically two sides of this trade. Think of it kind of like a condor. The first contract, you see here is a binary option for crude to expire above 93.50. All right. So again, for crude to expire above 93.50. All right. And basically, I sold that contract. You see here it says sell. It might be kind of hard to see, but you see sell of one at $10. So your max profit is $10. Your max loss is $90. Now again, remember the rule I try to use with binary options is if it gets if I'm taking a credit type trade, if it gets to 50, I look to exit the trade. What I don't want to do is ever take that full $90 loss because basically what I've done there is I've wiped out nine good trades with one bad trade. So again, I don't want to take that $90 loss. So if it trades above 50, I look to get out of the trade or adjust it. I might roll up and, and sell another contract and get out of this one and give myself more breathing room. Right. Exactly. So basically what I'm playing here is for crude to be below 93.50 by 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and you see the expiration time right there. The second part of that trade, so let's let's look at this. So that's $10, all right? Okay, so that's $10. Part of this trade was for crude to be above 92, and you can't really see this chart here, but there was some pretty good support earlier today around 92 bucks in crude. I couldn't get down 
Yeah, I looked at the contracts and I couldn't get down below kind of the 9150 area. There just wasn't enough premium there. But this contract, and this was about 10 o'clock today, I put this on. Uh, this contract for crude to be above $92 by 2.30 Eastern today was trading at 77 by 82. And the way that Nadex works, obviously the same as a bid ask of another uh, market. If I were to buy, wanted to get in at the market, I would buy it at 82. If I wanted to sell it at the market, I'd sell it at 77. Because of the fact that I can operate as a member, basically I put an order in at 81, kind of splitting the bid ask, and was able to get filled at 81. So my max profit on that trade was $19, max loss $81, what I paid. So you take 10 plus 19, and that equals $29, all right? So again, 10 plus 19 equals $29, and that's on a per contract basis on a one, one lot as an example, all right? So now here's the thing with this type of trade. I can't mm -hmm. lose on both sides, right? So it, if it closes above 93.50, all right, which would make this trade a loss, then that means that it's closing above 92, which makes this trade a win. If it closes below 92, which makes this trade a loss, that means it's trade closing below 93.50, which makes this trade a win. So basically, I look at $29, and so my max loss is now $71, all right? So $71. So you look at that return on risk, you say $29 divided by 71, basically gives you about a 40% return on risk, okay? So the key here is managing that risk to make sure that you don't take a full loss. So again, that's the key, to make sure you don't take a full loss. All right, and this one actually actually came close at the very end of the day. It had a big sell-off, uh, and this contract settled at 92.03. It never really got below that 92 area before the contract settled. After the contract settled, it did uh, finally break below it. But again, uh, this ended up being a uh, being a good trade. And here's here's the cool thing about Nadex is your contracts settle. Look at the timestamp. Now I'm on Central Time. Remember the contract was at 2:30 Eastern Time. I'm on Central Time, so you see there's 1:30 p.m. Uh, and this is my email. And you see it says your position in crude oil being above 92, 2:30 Eastern was settled on Thursday, February 28 at 2.30 and 3 seconds. The detail of your position are below. Uh, contract settlement, one contract, expiration value 92.03, so payout amount $100. That money is back in my account immediately. Cash, cash, you know, call it a day and withdraw money from my account. So again, you get that settlement immediately. It's not like you have to wait till the close of the day uh, to get the money back in your account after a good trade. So again, that was an example on crude oil, basically playing both sides of the equation. Now, okay, and, and Chip said DAX and LIFE are the only contracts. They wait 20 minutes for settlement. Only on those two contracts, right? So the DAX and the FTSE. All the other contracts settle basically pretty much immediately. Um, so, yeah, and Mike, actually, the, the issue with this one is I was on a webinar earlier today, so um, I didn't see that drop in the last five minutes. So... But again, it never got above that 50 point where I'd want to get out. Now, here's a trade that I came close to exiting for a loss. All right, This was a trade example, too. This is a credit strategy. The S&P, and, and you look at a daily chart, and you'll see this. Just pull up a daily chart on the S&P. But basically, you had this high here at 1525. This was earlier today when the S&P was at 1517. All right, So again, you see 1525 here. I was looking at it and felt like it was resistance. So I came to Nadex found this contract above 1525 that expired at the end of the day was trading around 11 to 15 so I put an order in to sell it at 12 bucks and was able to get filled so basically what I felt like today I thought you know I think that today was going to be a down day in the market you know we were trading at 1517 at the time I gave myself some breathing room now actually this market yeah they came very close and that's what uh, that's the thing here so here's a recap of the trades and this is how it looks in the open position window. You see I had my long crude trade. I was long at 81. I had my, sh my short crude trade where I was short at 10 and then my S&P trade. So basically, you know, that was um, three different trades that I had on. And this was, you know, profit and loss at the time. Uh, you, know, you can see I'm basically flat on it, down a couple bucks right after I put them on. Now here's the S&P trade. And like Doug said, they sure came close to 1425, which that resistance held. That's why it's key to focus on key areas in the market. Uh, and look, here's the binary option contract I sold 
and this price point is 40. Remember I talked about that 50 price point being the key price point. If it gets above 50, I probably want to look to exit the trade. And you see here is where we were at 40. Basically, uh, we came up and then look at how this thing sold off when, when the S&P started selling off. And then the option ended up expiring worthless because we closed well below 1425. But again, there's some really good opportunities that you can have in here. Even you know, for those of you that are very short-term traders, I do more daily swing type trades. But if you're a very short-term trader, there's some really good opportunities that you can get into where you can you know, sell something at 40, buy it back at 20 within a couple minutes if you're right. And again, um, you know, just very, very good moves in this market that if you look at today. So even on days where we don't have a huge range in S&P, which today, you know, up until the very end of the day, it really wasn't a huge day. It was just kind of a grind type day. You still see some pretty good percentage moves in these markets. But yeah, like Doug said, they came close and caught a break on that. It finally did sell off. But again, you know, by using things to our advantage, we were able to make money. If we had just shorted the futures at this point, chances are we'd have been stopped out in here and been out of the trade and lost money. Yep, exactly. All right, so example of strategy number two, what I talked about as far as a spread goes. Okay, if you're looking at this market, and here's, here's a look at the S&P, um, and this was towards the end of the day, if you're at 1520, and this is kind of a cool thing that you can do. Uh, I'm going to talk to you first of all about how you can just take a flat out trade with a spread, but also how you can use it with your futures account uh, is sort of a hedge strategy. All right, let's say that um, let's say that you thought the S&P was going to go up. Well, you could buy the spread, and basically the way it works on the spread, if you buy uh, five of the U.S. 500 spreads equals one ES. Okay, so that's the equivalent there. So let's say you buy five of these contracts. So you can also look at it and say trading one contract spread on the U.S. 500 is one-fifth of an ES. So that's another example you can trade live money without having to take all the risk. Uh, you know, trading small contract size. So you look at this, you could basically buy the S&P here and stay long throughout the rest of the day, give you about an hour and a half, uh, and have $45 worth of risk. Now, obviously, you know, you have a max profit of 1445 That's if the S&P were to rally 30 points, which probably it won't do. But again, still, you can, um, still, you know, you have very limited risk, and that's how you can use these spreads to your advantage where basically instead of buying the S&P and putting a stop in, you buy the spread close to the floor and you kind of figure that your max loss is your stop and then you can stay long as long as you want. Now here's the cool thing you could do with it. And Doug, you'll really like this one. All right, let's say that we're bearish towards the end of the day and we've got the S&P that you see here at 15, 19, 50. All right, so 15, 19, 50. And let's say that I want to short the S&P. So I short the ES, all right, short the ES, and then buy the Nadex call. Or say, okay, or sorry, the Nadex spread. All right, so I buy the Nadex spread. So I buy five of the Nadex spreads. Well, I'm short the S&P at 1519. I'm long this Nadex spread here at 1529. So basically, I look at that and I say, okay, the most I can lose on this trade, as long as the S&P stays below 1550, is $45 and then the difference of 15, 19, 50 to 15, 20. All right. So if the S&P were to rally, let's say to 15, 30. All right. So if it rallies to 15, 30, basically, you know, I'm short on this S&P. I'd lose about about 11 points. I'm long in the Nadex spread. I'd make 10 points, so I'd lose effectively 45, 50 bucks on the trade. Now let's say that the market drops to 15, 10. All right. So I lose the $45 on the Nadex trade. I'm, pro I'm still protected up to 50-50, and yeah, like Chip says, 15-20.9 is your break even, but I've got protection up to 15-50, and I can stay short the rest of the day. I don't have to worry if the S&P pops up two points and then falls out of bed. I'm still in the trade. Exactly. And so this is really, uh, really a powerful feature, and we've got a um, webinar on Saturday that um, Dan Cook from Nadex is going to be a part of, and he's going to cover the strategy. It's kind of called called the ultimate head strategy. Uh, that's at the close. That 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 would be at the at 3:15. So 3:15 central. Yeah. Um, and and you could do this daily contracts. But again, you put these trades on like and same thing with oil and gold. You know, you put it on, you put a hedge on, and you can be long a gold contract 
stay long all day long and only have about two hundred or three hundred dollars worth of risk you know with a large window like this now again keep in mind if you were to see the S&P trade above 1550 you're no longer protected so if the S&P were to rally to 1560 at that point you'd have to make an adjustment but uh, you just kind of play the odds and say what are the odds of it rallying over 30 points in the last 30 minutes you know it's pretty pretty slim um, no, that you so Simon on that you wouldn't have to have a stop on your futures contract. Your stop would effectively be that you're protected on Nadex up to up to fifteen fifty. So as your S and P contract's losing money if it goes against you, your Nadex contract is making that money and basically you have about a point, you know, fifty dollars worth of worth of loss there. So again, very um, you know, very helpful for you. All right, and then the other thing I wanted to point out, and this is this is kind of a little way just to gain a small edge in the market. This is what I like to call spread premium collection. All right, and this was earlier this morning, you know, about nine or ten o'clock. But take a look at the two contracts side by side. This is a contract 1480 to 1520 is the spread. Here's the S&P contract on the left, 1414 by 1425. Notice that you could buy this contract here in Nadex at a price slightly lower than the overall S&P price. And the reason you can do that is because it has a cap on it at, at 15.20. So if you're bullish the S&P, you feel like the S&P is going to go to 15.20, you're looking for basically six point move to the upside, you can get in the Nadex contract and get about half a point to one point improvement from where you would be if you bought the outright futures. Now you might look at that and say that's not a huge deal, but you start adding up a one point improvement every day and that'll really add up. So again, and you can do this in gold, you can do this in oil, you can do this in currencies, you can do it in grains, you can do it in all those different markets, indexes. Again, look at these uh, small edges that you can get. And the key in trading is having some type of an edge. You want to have some type of an edge. And you're able to do this and pick this up each and every day. So what you give up, and here's the thing, every time you have an edge, you're giving something up. So basically, um, if you, you, know, you have an edge uh, in the market and you're going to give up a little bit on the reward side, but if you're looking for six, six points there, then it doesn't matter either way. You know, you're looking to pretty much get out at 15, 20. You're better off going in the Nadex spread than the futures contract. So, and yeah, like Chip said, the, these contracts move based on the underlying. So you don't have to learn new strategies. You don't have to learn new indicators. You know, whatever indicators you're using right now for either the currency market or the futures market, you do the same thing. If you're bullish, it just gives you more choices and more flexibility, uh, more flexibility to trade. So right now what I'd like to do, if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, and basically one thing, you know, one thing with Nadex is it is an, a newer product. A lot, you know, like we said, you know, we took a poll earlier in the room, basically, uh, and a lot of you guys had not traded on Nadex before. And typically, what Nadex does is when you open a open a, an account, you get a two week demo. Um, and what I'd like to do, because what I, you know, we really want you guys to practice, want you guys to learn, uh, you know, to learn the platform, is basically if you open a live account. If you'll send Chip an email, Chip's in the room, you send Chip an email, chip.frame at nadex.com. All right, if you send Chip an email, he will extend your demo for 12 months. All right, so basically open a live account. And you can put, you know, I rec people ask, what do you recommend putting in? I'd say 500 to 1,000 bucks. Honestly, you can, if you just want to fund it to use the demo right now, you can put 100 bucks in there. But um, you know, I think to trade it, start with 500 to 1,000 bucks. But basically, open a live account and then email chip.frame at nadex.com and ask for a 12-month demo. So basically, yeah, like Chip said, so you know, you put your 100 bucks in there, and then um, you can practice. Basically, you can practice basically um, for the, over the next year. So and here, here's the deal. Right now, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, Chip, uh, if you'll come on and answer them. Uh, I know that right now they're working, Doug, with an FCM uh, to get set up with an FCM where they can take Canadian accounts. Right now it's U.S. accounts only. But if you want to go ahead and get a demo just to practice, um, 
then then you can do that. And Chip, you want to come on and answer some of these questions? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Um, first of all, right now uh, we can only take U.S. Uh, residents uh, direct business. Uh, we just recently, it is public knowledge, we just recently bought, bought some uh, hardware where we're working on having a turnkey solution to have a front end back office risk component to offer to FCMs. Once FCMs join our exchange and there's already interest in that, then you will be able to, people in Canada or Europe or wherever you are, uh, going through the FCM to trade on Natix like the normal, you know, the bigger exchanges. Uh, the only fees that you get here at Natix is the nine bucks for, you know, if you're trading greater than 10 contracts, nine in, nine out, cap or 90 cents. No no additional fees. It, the contracts are, you could say, fully margined. You're not going to get a, a margin account. Uh, it's all self-directed trades. One thing I did want to mention here is, yes, it's 90 cents per side, 90 cents in, 90 cents out. If you're wrong on the binary, then um, you're done. You walk away from it. it the, the, the money's been taken out of your account. The, the, essentially, the premium plus the fee, you walk away. Um, let's see, uh, oh, the one thing I want to talk about the binaries that you, that you keep, keep in mind here, and somebody talked about the, the essentially are uh, options. Well, they are. It's calls and put, long call, long put. You do not receive premium, okay? So from the long call uh, side of it, it's um, you're, you're on the binary, you're buying in, in the money, at the money, out of the money, call if you agree with the statement, the reverse uh, on the puts. It's just, and what it translates to is how much edge do you have when you put on that trade, given or received? So if I'm paying 80 to make 20, and I'm trading a weekly, and let's say I'm doing a currency, I might have 120 pips of the edge that it's over the strike. If I have an 80 to make 20 and it's a daily, maybe it's only you know, 30. And if I'm doing uh, an hour left to go, maybe it's only 10. And if it's a half an hour, 15 minutes, I'm only might be six. But what, what you're doing is you're looking, okay, 80 to make 10, how much does, time before it expires? I'm bullish. I look at the market. It's been sitting here just, uh, you know, paint drying, flatlining. I'll take the edge. But you, are, you have an edge right now, and it, it's just um, do you, are you comfortable with that? But, the, but what the, the – uh, the thing you have to remember is if you're wrong and you hold it till expiration, you have $80 of exposure. The guy on the other side of the trades only put up 20. He's 20 to make net 80 at the at the end. Uh, is the one? Well, we, we have a weekly binary, we have a daily binary, and we have a two-hour uh, binary as well. And the intraday binaries start in the morning at 8 o'clock uh, Eastern time. Essentially, it's uh, – 8 to 10 Eastern time, then, uh, and we offer nine different strikes. So essentially what you have is the underlines moving over the, over the strike, under the strike, how's it going to go? But as you get closer and closer to expiration, essentially you have, because of nine different strikes, you have something that's going to be in play if you're one of those who like to trade it real close to expiration. If you're not, then you're going to either get more edge or give more edge. Uh, but essentially, they are out of the money calls, in the money call. Uh, you know what I'm saying. And, and it's, but it does have a cap. It's the cap of a hundred bucks. Uh, the other thing you got to remember about the binaries is that if you're holding it till expiration and the underline is uh, uh, the underlines trading near the strike, the at the money, it's a gamma play because. Think of it like this. It's worth 100. It's worth zero. Who knows? How is it going to work? So it, it, there's some major volatility there. Now, if you don't, don't get out, then Nadex will drive the expiration value. If, it's a, if the underlines of future, we're taking the last 25 futures trades, the five high, five low out, middle 15 simple average, and then we uh, carry it one more decimal point. If it's a currency, our feeds with Reuters, it's the same process, only we're taking the midpoint of the bid-ask spread. And most of the currency pairs are five pips wide, requirement or less, same process. Uh, yes, IG Group owns Nadex. They bought uh, Nadex uh, five, 
five, four years ago, something like that, and has made tremendous improvement to the exchange, changed our uh, structure where we have intermediation. So once, once we get this turnkey solution done, then SCMs can uh, join the exchange. Outside of the U.S., these products are, binaries especially, are very well known. I think they've been trading them since 1974. So this is, this is what we can't wait for, and then it's going to be great because, uh, uh, you know, think of all this, all, all the liquidity, all the participants on these limited risk products. Now, the other, the other thing I want to talk to you about is the bull spreads. The bull spreads, again, are really calls and puts you know, long call, long put, but it's a variable payout. So think of it like this, the low strike, you are, that's the, the call that you're buying. If you're selling it, then the high strike is essentially the long put, okay? Um, and wherever the strike price that you, or wherever you trade on Nadex, that's your break even. So if, as long as the underlying finishes somewhere in that range in between, it has intrinsic value. And again, why is this so, why are these, the cost entry so cheap? It's because it's a one-day option, a two-hour option, but it's capped. It's not an unlimited profit potential. It's capped, so that keeps it cheap. Short time, and it's capped, and it's fantastic because you have underlying moves, so does the option. And so, you know, back when I was on the floor, I used to, the guys, I'd drive them nuts in the pits because the underlying would move the way I thought. I'd get another quote, well, Three-month option, guess what? They, they don't quite move the way I thought they would. But this, this does. Okay, so but one of the things I wanted to bring up to you about the, the bull spreads is if the underlines trading in the middle of the range. Essentially, we offer three different ranges, one that's in the money, at the middle one's at the money, and the out of money is the one at, top, at the time of listed. But if the, under, if the one in the, the middle where the underline is trading in the middle of the range, you'll see Nadex pricing very similar, it's mirroring the underline. It's almost like it's got a dull of one. But then as you go towards the wings, then it starts to slow down at one point where the optionality kicks in. Think of it like this. If the underline, it, it, these are really a vertical call, a long vertical call spread, a long vertical put spread. It, it's no rocket science, it's, that's what it is. And, and the behavior is such, but it's traded as a unit. And the way it's displayed is, it's display any time I try to figure out my break even. Well, that's what your trade price is. So it's kind of a nice little shortcut. But but as the underlying trades towards the wings, at some point the optionality kicks in. So Nadex will lag because these it's a collar. It's a it's a, a floor and ceiling. So uh, you you can you can do these out of the money. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's less less risk. It's definitely yeah less risk and less reward. But the the um, but then if you look at some of these uh, longer term ranges, you know look at the S and P's. I think that's a four hundred dollar range. I think a lot of times I've seen them where maybe you buy buy an out of the money maybe thirty bucks, but that means you got three seventy upside. Now the whole thing is that break even. Are you bullish? Are you is your outlook for the futures going to be above that break even? It has to be that. Otherwise you don't look forget about it. But um, so you, you have the ability to trade these uh, bull spreads, out of money call with caps, out of money put with caps, look at the time frame. But then the other way to look at it is if you're looking at a uh, essentially a short-term movement, some of these tighter ranges where you're trading it at the money, yeah, you can trade it with a lot less capital. So if, if you, like uh, the, the example I always like to, to uh, show is what if you're trading a euro cash market uh, FX you got in the one dollar per tick well, I think it's about three hundred dollars initial margin so if you wanted to trade the hundred pip spread on Nadex two hour duration essentially pay fifty to make fifty so what you could do if you're going to use the same three hundred now you have a six dollar per pip on 300 versus one. Now, granted, you you have a cap and a floor, but if you're in there for the short time frame, on a short move, it's something to think about. So, the, I'm not saying that 
all this, you know, you're going to stop trading futures or FX, but this is certainly something that you should look at as another choice, looking at the cost to pay out. Does it make sense given your view? So anyway, uh, any questions for me? I don't know about that. <laughs> That you just have to look at the how they that could be tough on the 140 you know 1,445 but um, you know I don't know if, if you got to go with what strikes we have so you can't pick them. Index margins. Um, Morgan, do you know what? Typically, I guess if you're looking at the futures, you know, like overnight futures, you're looking at five thousand um, bucks overnight, and then intraday typically five hundred to twenty-five hundred, depending on your broker. So again, still much lower. It's much lower to trade uh, from a margin standpoint on Nadex on most trades. All right, good deal. Well, again, thanks uh, to all of you guys for being here. Yeah, the spreads require very low margin. Uh, thanks to Chip uh, for taking time out of his day to be here as well. And if you guys have any questions, I've, I've posted his email in here as well, but uh, basically if you open an account, send Chip an email, it's chip.frame at nadex.com and uh, he'll get your demo extended for a year. We're going to do several live trading events in the upcoming weeks where we'll come in here in a live market and basically look for some opportunities and then also be sure to uh, join us for Saturday's session as well. So we appreciate you guys being here. I'll type that link in one more time. We'll shut the room down in about uh, two minutes. So you want to do that. Uh, Steve, I'll post a copy of the recording on our website at some point tomorrow and email it out uh, to everybody that registered. So thanks again, Chip. Appreciate you being here. Uh, thanks to all you guys in attendance. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, and, and I'm glad that you enjoyed it. And Simon, uh, Gabriella, go to our website, tradingpub.com slash events. So again, be sure to send Chip an email. He'll get your demo extended. Uh, for a year and look forward to uh, seeing you guys at our next event.